it's October, and you know what that means. It's time to bust out your broomsticks and rev up the old Hocus Pocus VHS because fall is upon us. <laughs> And that means when it comes to decor, now is the perfect time to tap into your dark witchy side. <laughs> and as someone who taps into her dark witchy side all year round through her decor, I have a bunch of easy ways to evoke that witch aesthetic without any trips to the Halloween party store. So in this video, I'm gonna share some of those witchy decor ideas that you can use to tap into the magic that you inherently possess as a human being. We all have a little magic within us that is begging to be unleashed. And there's just something about fall weather that makes the witch aesthetic style feel more powerful than ever. So let's talk about the ways that you can incorporate some stylish witchy touches into your apartment so that you can walk around your space with that big witch energy. And if you're new to my channel, my name is Steffi and I'm the creator of the style blog Moda Misfit. And you're watching Living Pretty, the place for apartment styling tips and small space decor inspiration. So if you're into that kind of thing, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when a new episode goes up every week. So the first witch aesthetic decor idea I'm going to share with you is probably the most obvious and straightforward, and that is crystals. I think a little piece of this broke off. You may or may not believe in the supposed magical properties of crystals. I personally don't, but there's something pretty remarkable about the fact that crystals just naturally exist from the earth. And there's something about that that activates a sense of power when used in things like home decor and jewelry. Maybe there's something to the fact that these minerals and stones have been around for millennia and their primal, unpolished look makes us feel connected to something wild and free. Something ancient and unbound to modern society and therefore unoppressive. Living wild and free and unoppressed is fundamental to the mentality and history of witchiness, so it makes sense that crystals are a big part of the witch aesthetic. I feel the power. <laughs> Ooh, okay, anyway. Another way that I incorporate the witch aesthetic into my apartment is with vases that look kind of like potion bottles that you would find in uh, like an ancient apothecary. <laughs> Seriously, just find little like vases that look like a potion could be made in them. Or this even looks a little bit like a cauldron, <laughs> you know? Um, I have a bunch of vases like these scattered throughout my apartment and I love them because they are very stylish, but they also sort of hint a vibe of maybe I made a magical potion that cast a spell on an unsuspecting man, or I just put faux florals in them. So if you want to get this look, I recommend just Googling apothecary vase and a bunch of results will come up that give that sort of potion vase look. At the end of the day, these vases are just perfect for my faux succulents. Spell casting on defenseless men, optional. Another way to incorporate the witch aesthetic in your space is to incorporate skulls. Now, I'm not talking about going to the party store and buying a cheap plastic skull. I'm also not talking about using actual skulls of dead things, unless you're into like the really macabre vibe, which respect. The way I incorporate skull imagery in my space is very simple, and that's just through my Death Note manga right here. So you can do anything from just incorporating a skull through artwork, through books. Um, and there's also some really beautiful skulls that you can buy on Etsy. Anything from skull vases that display flowers or um, skull decanters. There's all kinds of really stylish ways of incorporating skulls in your space that aren't tacky or super literal or specifically Halloween decor, but they're more of a refined, heightened sort of way of displaying skulls. 
It's funny, I wrote a blog post way back in the early days of Moda Misfit, where I talked about the ways that you can incorporate skull decor in your space. And it actually kind of ended up being almost uh, like an essay on why we as humans are drawn to macabre things like skulls. Like what is it within us that makes us want to tap into that sort of darker part of ourselves? I ultimately think that it's because we are drawn to things that sort of make us confront our mortality. Anyway, <laughs> someone uh, commented on the blog post when I posted it on Facebook. A troll, a little troll, came and commented on it saying something like, if you need to be told how to display a skull, then you probably shouldn't have skulls in your space. Basically, it was like one of the goth kids from South Park um, who felt very defensive about their dark goth ways. And they thought that they're being so unique for being dark and goth when really they were just like conforming to each other. <laughs> if you want to lean into more of a dark part of yourself through your decor, but you're afraid of how people will react. You're afraid that you'll come across as like a poser or that people will wonder why is she suddenly getting so dark? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I encourage you to not worry about what people think. Basically, don't let anybody tell you the right way to be dark or the right way to express maybe the darker parts of yourself. We all have a darkness within us. I think there's a way to feel empowered by that and empowered by embracing some more like dark imagery and to not care about what the goth kids from high school <laughs> think um, about what you're doing. At the end of the day, just do what you want to do. And if someone has something to say about the fact that you have a skull in your apartment, then uh, who cares? <laughs> Another super easy way to incorporate the witch aesthetic in your apartment is to use copious amounts of candles. I mean, go crazy with candles. You should not back away from the impulse to make your apartment look like you're about to perform a ceremony that celebrates Mother Earth and her power. Some kind of dark ritual. <laughs> oh, and of course, don't forget your familiar. <laughs> Hi, little kitty. <laughs> uh, anyway, candles. Anyone who's familiar with my channel knows of my obsession with home fragrance. You can watch these two videos for my recommendations. I'll link them below. If you do decide you want to go crazy with lighting a bunch of candles at once like this, I suggest you have some unscented candles on hand. <laughs> After lighting all of these candles in my little apartment for the sake of getting this footage, I have to admit I started to get a little lightheaded, which was kind of fun, but I, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Some of my candles really are perfect for the witch aesthetic though. Like this candle is a straight up black wick candle, so if a virgin lights this, the Sanderson sisters are totally going to show up and start wreaking havoc. Good thing there are no virgins in this apartment. Another less obvious way to incorporate the witch aesthetic in your apartment is to display strong women. And I do this by displaying strong singer-songwriters in my space. Fiona Apple, Poe, Taylor Momsen, Stevie Nicks with my Fleetwood Mac um, lyrics, uh, the garbage lyrics that I display. These are women who are extremely powerful, extremely individualistic, um, don't back away from being themselves. That is witch energy right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anytime a woman is strong and self-assured, self-possessed, that is that is some grade A witchy energy. <laughs> Anytime I think you display a strong woman in your space, whether it's a quote of hers or um, her actual image, tapping into some good old feminine strength energy, that is what I view as the witch aesthetic. <laughs> Another way to embrace the witch aesthetic in your space is to display art, objects, oddities that are vaguely menacing and spooky. I also think that displaying spooky um, nature images like the wall art that I have back here by Tortoise Kema on Society6. If you want some beautiful sort of foggy spooky scenery, he is a perfect artist for that vibe. I have these 
up all year round because fog is my favorite weather. But if you want a really sort of delicate way of incorporating spooky vibes, then a great way to do it is just by showing some of the spookier elements that occur in nature um, through your wall art. There are also some really great ways to DIY your own witch aesthetic art. So one idea is to go for a walk in nature on a cloudy, foggy day and just take some pictures with your iPhone of what's around you. So let's say you find um, a beautiful tree with like barren branches and you take it and you make it black and white, something like that. You can do anything from just printing it on your home printer and then putting it in a frame, or you could even go to a site like Best canvas.com and have it printed on canvas. It's very easy to create original artwork in that way. I have a photo that I took a few falls ago. It's this circle of trees uh, that are completely leafless and it looks it straight up looks like a place where witches cast spells, I'm telling you. <laughs> I I think one of these days I'm gonna have it printed on canvas because it is the perfect sort of witch aesthetic photo. And something to keep in mind is that you can find witchiness to photograph in the most unexpected places. This photo was taken in my parents' super suburban, every house looks the same, neighborhood. <laughs> Even in suburbia, there is witchy magic afoot. So don't get discouraged if you feel like you don't have access to an environment that lends itself to witch aesthetic photography. You just have to look at things a little differently to find the magic, because Magic is everywhere. <laughs> Another really easy DIY art project that you can do to get the witch aesthetic is to just go on a site like Canva, which is a free graphic design tool that literally anyone can use. You don't have to be a graphic designer. It's really easy. So if I were to do a, a DIY piece of art to convey the witch aesthetic, I would go on Canva, type in vintage florals or magic or something like that and then just browse the designs that they have in there and create your own little piece of graphic art. That's something anybody can do and on Canva it's free. Or if you want to unlock more designs on Canva, it's like $10 a month, which you can cancel at any time. So create a piece of original graphic artwork in Canva, print it out, put it in a frame, and boom, you have a beautiful piece of original artwork that conveys that witch aesthetic that we're talking about. So there you have it. That's how I like to convey the witch aesthetic in my apartment. Like I said, I do it all year round, but fall weather is specifically perfect for this vibe. So tell me in the comments below, are you gonna try any of these or do you have a specific way that you like to decorate for fall? Tell me below. And if you want daily glimpses into my studio apartment life and how I use the witch aesthetic on a daily basis, <laughs> then follow me on Instagram at moda.misfit. If you want regular doses of small apartment inspiration, then subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to be notified when a new episode goes up every week. And remember, your apartment is destined to be pretty and magical <laughs> and you are pretty powerful. <laughs>